Alright, we are here and we are live. Let me fix my audio really quickly. There we go. Alright. Good afternoon, evening, whatever time of day it is for you, and welcome. Hi, I'm Kayariana, and I am uh, going to be doing some cross stitch today. Pick up where we left off last week with my summer carousel horse. Sorry for taking so long I, to get ready. I'm running about five minutes behind. Uh, Naka, thank you for the host. And Saren, also thank you for the host for earlier. <sighs> Run around like a crazy person. I do have an eight-month-old, so she is kind of crazy sometimes. And we were just trying to get her fed before we got everything going. And, well, so a couple things. I know Saren had wanted to see my uh, cross-stitch journal, which I started. It is this right here. My journal. If you are familiar with the Uncharted series, you may recognize the cover as well. Bud Nets, thank you for the host. And so I've got for each cross stitch project that I've started this year. RC Guy, thank you for the follow. I have, have the color samples as well as some sketches as well to go with it. So the first one I'm into the jungle, I've got the fish that I'm working on, I've got my dogs through time sal, I've got my goose and tulips, which I hope to have finished by the end of the month. Should be soon. Parzival! Ah, oh, thank you for the host. And then, of course, the one I'm working on now, the Summer Carousel Horse. I haven't, done, I haven't even put that I've started yet. I'm a little behind in my journal. That cover is kind of everything, and I've never played the series. Yeah, it's kind of cool, because if you play Uncharted, um, Nathan Drake is the main character. He says that he's the descendant of Sir Francis Drake, and we have all this backstory that goes with it. And at one point, he used his journal to protect him from a bullet wound. So it's, it's fun. My husband got it for me, because I had mentioned that I really liked his journal. And I kind of wanted to play along too, make my own. So uh, where I'm going now is going to continue working on the saddle. And we'll keep going from there. I made tea. I have some Earl Grey. I made it iced because it has been nice today. It is not too hot. It was in the mid-70s Fahrenheit. Um, and it was very nice, so not too hot. Um, ooh, is that a pretty book? Do you know if it's hand-bound? No, it, it looks like it is... Um, it was actually the official Uncharted journal. It is from Uncharted 4. I even have the thing that went with it. So, there's that. It is not hand bound. It looks like it's your typically regular bound book, but it's fun. And I do apologize for any baby sounds in the background. I do have an eight month old, and she's being entertained by my husband. And I have a very uh, concerned dog right now over here because we've locked her in with me. So she would eat her dinner, and now she's like, um, let me out, Dad, let me out. But I would bring her over on stream, except that she is a 68-pound greyhound, and she's kind of heavy, and she would be really confused. But if she gets over here, I may bring her over and show you guys my dog. She's kind of awesome. So now I have to see exactly where I left off, because that's the one problem when you stop stitching. You're like, where was I, and where am I going? So, I'm actually not too far off from where I thought I was. I am working on Teresa Wensler's Summer Carousel Horse. Um, if you're familiar with Teresa Wensler, her stuff is kind of epic, and it has lots of different colors, blended fabrics, ha um, three-quarter stitches, and Krennic Metallic Blending Filament. Yeah, a Sabs, it is kind of unfortunate that it is a, um, it's not hand bound, but having seen people actually bind books, I'm not surprised that it's not. <laughs> so I'm working on 28 count Joblin, and I have worked, it's been a while since I've worked on even weave fabric, so as I knock poor little Yandu out of the frame here. Yandu, you stay there. see how many stitches are we got Six. 
All right, yeah, so my pattern is just off out of screen here. This pattern is actually still available. Most of Teresa Wensler's stuff is out of print, but a lot of it's available online. So if you are up for the challenge, go for it. Patterns Online has all most of her collection. You're learning how to bind books? Awesome. I've always wanted to, but I have so many other hobbies that if I pick up one more, I might get lots of glares from my husband. He loves me, but we um, subscribe to the hobby collecting hobby, so we have both actually have a lot of hobbies. And I, it is 28 count, but I'm working over two. So it's like stitching on 14 count, but just being aware that you've got really tiny holes. And do let me know if I ever get anything out of frame. I'm working, I usually work in my lap when I'm not on camera. So this is a little, I'm still getting used to working with it on a table in front of me. So I just did a three-quarter half stitch, or three-quarter cross stitch. A lot of this pattern utilizes a lot of three-quarter stitches. Did I just miss the hole? I did. No, I didn't. Yay! <laughs> nag if I'm being bad. Got it. I mean, na of course not, na Anaka. You would never nag. Yeah, Sabs, so you need to start with a new hobby, always goes that way. When I got in, I dabbled in chain mailing for a while, and getting started in that mean, meant I had to get pliers, and I had to get rings, and now that I have that stuff, getting back into it wouldn't be so bad. Same with painting. I actually went to college for drawing and painting, and I, my first semester of oil painting was so expensive. I had, didn't have, I went from having nothing to having everything in one semester, so... It did take a while to get everything going. Yeah, bookbinding is on my list of things I would like to learn how to do eventually. So yes, the excited baby in the background is my daughter. She is eight months old and she's adorable, but she's also very excited. All right. So I tend to like to keep a pretty neat back, and in doing so, I do end up having to start and stop in sections just so I can keep my back neat. So you will probably see quite a bit of flipping back and forth, and I realize that I left my needle minder on my other project. I only have one right now, but that's okay. I can get that on the break. So if I count this right, and one, and two. All right. There we are. So this section of the horse is the stomach and saddle. So where the gray is, is the stomach of the horse, and where I'm working is the saddle and the blanket. I usually work left to right and then top to bottom. I might be doing the whole carousel horse before I do the border, or I might go into the border sooner rather than later. I haven't quite decided which direction I'm going to go. 
after I do this section. So it'll be kind of, we'll figure that out as we go along. If you hear crunching, it is my dog. She is eating her dinner finally. And I missed a hole. Since I've started with the carousel, you've decided you'll start with the seasonal fairies when you start a new TW project. Awesome! Yeah, I've actually got a rotation that I intend to do after this carousel horse, which may take at least a year depending on how often I get to work on it. Right now, I'm only working on it on stream because I have quite a other few works in progress that I would like to get under control before I keep going on this one. And because of the nature of the this pattern, I don't think it would travel very well. I do take a lot of my cross stitching in a lot of different places. I do it almost everywhere I go. But my next one, after after I finish the carousel horse, I've got these seasonal dragons. I've already done the spring dragon. So since I'm doing summer carousel next, I think I will do the fall dragon. And those are neat because they both use beads and other findings in it as well. Though it is more difficult to work with beads now that I have a small child. Working with beads before was never a big challenge, but now that I have someone who could choke on small beads, I don't get to work on beading projects very often anymore. Let's see. more works in progress than I really want to have right now. I went from having two works in progress, and I was so proud of myself, I got myself down to two works in progress. And then I started following Serenadia. And now I have seven or eight works in progress. So, I will say that creative streamers are awesome, but they're all enablers, so... <laughs> And I will tell you, yes, you should start the project, too, because it would be fun. Luckily, my husband has kind of given up on... <laughs> and lets me just kind of do what I want with my cross-stitching. Within reason, I don't go crazy. The thing that's keeping me from starting more now is I don't have any more fabric to start things on. So, that's a good safe bet. And I have it, and luckily... The kind of fabric I want, Michael's and Joanne's doesn't carry as regularly, so it's easier not to buy it if I can't get a hold of it easy like that. Oh, hey Naka, I told you tomorrow was payday. <laughs> um, Naka has an Etsy shop. She hand dyes fabric, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I will have to pull up the link later, otherwise I'd have you posted. I would have to mess with that, but it's awesome, and I highly recommend checking her out, and I will definitely get a link posted at some point after the break to check out her fabric if you are into cross-stitching. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, that's one thing that I haven't gone into is hand dyeing my own fabric at this point. I have, again, I have so many other hobbies and so many other things. I really don't need another hobby. You're getting your butterfly uh, sal pro fabric onto your key snap since you can't stitch more on the winter sal. Oh yeah, that's right. You ran out of the. Um, the metallic DMC. And for those of you who are new to cross stitching, um, a SAL or SAL is a stitch along. And it can be something as simple as everyone picking one 
of the same project and working on it together at the same time, or doing some... A lot of stitch-alongs are mystery stitch-alongs, where only a portion of the, pa the pattern comes out each month or every couple weeks, depending on what the decision is. And you only... I'm currently working on two mystery stitch-alongs. I've got the next part of Into the Jungle of my stitch along comes out beginning of May, so May 1st, which is exciting because I am ready for the next part. I wonder what animal it's going to be. We started with a sloth and then we moved into two cans and then a frog. I must have frogged that frog four or five times. And then the cute the last month was a tiger. So we will see what happens next with the next month. All right, so do I want to move on to another color or figure out where more of this is. Because of the nature of this, I usually tend to work one color at a time all over and then go to another color, but because this has a lot of blends and a lot of different colors confettied around, I tend not to do that as often with the Teresa Wetzlers. I tend to work in little sections so I can establish landmarks so I don't have to do a lot of counting. So I'm actually um, have wanting to avoid this color because I'm going to be moving to Ikru next. Ikru is ivory, basically, and since I'm working on ivory fabric, it's going to be kind of hard to, to read, but it's really going to help me establish where we're going next. Do I use 28 count? Because Count is 14 because it hides the gray in the fabric better. Um, I've never worked one over one on even weave. With um, this, this pattern calls for a lot of three quarter cross stitches. And with a three quarter cross stitch, you cannot work one over one with even weave because you would have no place to put that little quarter stitch to make the three quarter stitch work. It hides the weave nicely and having that extra hole really helps with those stitches because unlike Ada cloth, if you're doing a three quarter cross stitch, you have to make your own hole with the even weave that hole already exists which is super helpful so it's harder to see it but some of these little half stitches in here I don't know how in focus that is um, there's a three-quarter stitch and that's super easy to do on the even weave Uh, Naka's hoping for a monkey or an elephant for our next month and in into the jungle. And Naka's on, in on that one with me, too. And Saren playing World of Warcraft has unlocked nine of the 12 class halls. You are way ahead of me on that one. I have done the hunter, the druid, the shaman, the monk, and the demon hunter. I think that's all the ones I have at 100. And I'm a World of Warcraft player, too. Yay! It's a lot. Of, I've been playing for way too long. We won't talk about how long I've played WoW. That's probably safer. Let's see. I've got a magnetic board coming in a couple in some by some by next week at the latest. So this might. I believe it has magnifying with it, so this might make it really mu make it much easier for me to read this chart. This is actually a hand-drawn chart as opposed to a computer-generated chart, so in some ways it's super difficult to read. I tend not to do loop starts. I don't know why. I guess because when I'm working on a project that uses blended colors, and this is one that will use blended colors. I haven't picked one of those colors yet. It's just easier just to have my floss in a similar length so I'm not having to cut floss. I did it again. There we go. 
missed where I was going. I'm gonna have to find a better place for Yandu. There we go. All right. What? I'm gonna guess because in WoW you have to have all the things and get all the achievements. So you have all the achievement points that don't really matter except that saying that I have all the achievement points. I have two of the class mounts. I'm working on the third, but I got stuck because I need lots of something I can't get to drop, so. I think I've got myself a small loop knot, yes. Glad I caught that now instead of later. <laughs> no crazier than the rest of us. So I do apologize that the color I'm working on does not show up as well on the fabric right now, but I need to get this section established so that I can easily add other colors. And not have to do a lot of counting. Because even though this is counted cross-stitch, most cross-stitchers I know, unless they're working in rows or columns, tend to like to do as little counting as they have to. I guess we prefer counting stitches than we prefer counting how many places the stitches needs to go from a certain place. So down to. everyone have a good day today hope no one anyone who had to work didn't have to work too hard I spent my day rescuing ducklings at least the last part of my day I do work in a place that has lots of opportunity for ducklings and mama duck and her eight ducklings decided that it would be a great idea to walk where everybody was so I spent the last 10-15 minutes of my shift chasing ducks into a planner so that they wouldn't get trampled by people. Mama Duck was not having it. She was very upset with me, but the last thing I needed was ducklings and people getting pit, bit by a, um, an angry Mama Duck. They were kind of cute, Naka. They were super, super cute ducklings. I was very impressed that Mama Duck still had eight ducklings. So I saved all the ducks today. I do really like ducks. I collect rubber duckies. They all live on a shelf in the bathroom, because where else would you put rubber duckies but your bathroom? I even gave some of my little ducks to my daughter to play in the bathtub with. She doesn't have all my ducks, just a few of them. So ducks, carousels are kind of my thing.
I really need to find a cute duck cross stitch. The goose that I am currently working on uh, with Serenadia and her community is pretty awesome. It's close to being a duck, but it's not quite a duck. But he is really cute. If you follow my Instagram, you'll see regular updates of this, the projects I'm working on outside of streaming. My pattern decided it want to attack me. I've also got a fan overhead, so it's not helping with the paper pattern. But it does get warm where I'm sitting sometimes, so I'm just trying to keep myself nice and cool. So between my fan and my iced tea, I think we'll be set. So is anyone doing anything exciting tonight? I know, well, I find cross stitch exciting, so there is that. My husband's been playing God of War, the new one, and he just completed it today. So he's got to find something else to do now besides watch the baby. Sarah miscounted. 10 of 13 unlocked. Well, you're still three shy of having all of them, so yay. Yeah, I can't convince my hubby to play World of Warcraft with me. I look at him, I say, but please, and he says no. He doesn't like the idea of a game that doesn't end. He also doesn't play Dungeons and Dragons with me either, so we play other games together. In fact, we're overdue for a board game night. We're kind of itching for one. We'll have to figure out a time and a place. Yeah, my husband is saying um, that my evil twin should start up her game night so we could play games. Um, real quick story. My, my evil twin is a person who we share the same name. She, we don't call her Kaya, we call her by our, our, <laughs> my, our real name. She's got longish blonde hair, similar to my color. We both wear glasses. I wear contacts more now. Both about the same height, and people used to mistake us for each other at work because we work together. And she actually introduced me to my husband at a camping event. I do medieval reenactment and recreation, and I met him at a camping event. And she's my evil twin, so I have to thank her because she introduced me to my husband, but she's still the evil one. Don't let her tell you otherwise. <laughs> and then if you ask my brother, he'll say that, I, that she and I are both evil twins, so that's why we, we call each other our evil twins. She can't be that bad. She introduced me to, to Cujo, who I may call a variety of different names on stream beyond his real name. <laughs> Definitely out of practice working on even weave. I'd like to start working on even weave almost exclusively. I really like it a lot, and I find that it looks a little more like regular fabric as opposed to the cross stitch fabric. Not that there's anything wrong with Ada Cloth. Don't get me wrong, Ada Cloth is great. 
I learned how to stitch on Ada cloth. I still will probably continue to stitch on Ada, but I'm really for coming back to even weave after going to be on Ada for so long. I'm remembering why I kind of fell in love with it the first time I stitched on it. So I will probably be going back to Ada cloth, um, not Ada, to even weave almost exclusively. I do ha still have some 18 count black Ada. Have to figure out what I want to put on black Ada cloth. There is a Teresa Wensler unicorn that would look amazing on it, but it's a matter of purchasing the pattern and deciding I want to add another Teresa Wensler to my to-do list or not. Because I still have quite a few that I'd like to do. And if you haven't taken the jump to even weave and you're still working on Ada, there's nothing wrong with that either. I get that the idea of working over two or working that tiny is super intimidating. I remember the first, my first project on even weave was Celestial Dragon by Teresa Wetzler and boy was I not sure what I was getting into. And I'm glad I did it though, because I learned a lot and it actually forced me to take that jump forward and expand my skill set. I gotta move my chair forward, I realize I'm further back than I wanted to be. There we go, that's better. The unicorn worked up pretty quick despite the kinetic because the fabric made up so much of the background. Oh, that's good to know. So that means I would have to buy another pattern, and I don't need to buy any more patterns. I have so many patterns I need to work on, but I still need to buy all the patterns because there are some really cute ones that come out. I bought a unicorn, not a unicorn, a mermaid stitch along that I haven't even started because it was a, a salty mermaid and it looks, it's amazing. The first part is a unicorn sitting on a, on, the, on a rock. It says, my ass is cold from sitting on this fucking rock. Pardon my language for those of you who have children listening. But I saw it. I'm like, I need this stitch along. And I had to buy it. And that same uh, artist, Peacock and Fig, has some very um, salty cross stitches. And I kind of need the one that has a duck and it says, get ducked. So... Because all the ducks. But I do have a lot of other patterns that I'd like to do. And I even have a couple of kits I saw when they were on sale at Joann's. There's, I have a dragon. And despite how much I love dragons, I actually don't have a dragon cross stitch in progress right now. Which is actually kind of surprising because I always have seemed to have one of those in progress. I finished up my last dragon cross stitch this summer. I had a lot of time to stitch this summer, uh, I, being pregnant and it being hot in California. So I was like, ah, I did a lot of stitching. I got a lot of works in progress done, which was kind of awesome. But at the same time, it allows me to work more on more cross stitch and do more things. Because all the cross stitch, all the time. Eventually, once I get this all kind of settled, I intend to do some painting on stream. I've got a manuscript style illuminated painting I'm working on, and I do need to force myself to work on it. It's actually um, it's for somebody else, and I am felt so bad that I haven't been working on it, but I've had the best reason for not working on it between getting pregnant and having a baby. I didn't have time, but I'm running out of excuses not to work on it, so. There we go. 
So it's a little hard to see, but I've worked down this side here, and it's... There's going to be blue and stuff in here, I believe. It's hard to sell. I can't see my thumbnail, which is in the upper corner, but there's some blue and then some pinks as well. One thing I do like about this series, the summer and the winter horses are in the standing carousel pose, and the spring and the fall horses are in jumping carousel horse poses. So that's kind of neat that you've got the variety of types of carousel po horse poses. So my screen, my, I've posted my streaming schedule for the next, for the rent, rest of this week and next week. I do work later uh, tomorrow and Friday as well as next week, so I will not have. I'll be starting later in the evening. So if those of you who are on the East Coast or further to the Midwest, I get. If you can't join me, I know it gets kind of late. But if you're here, that's awesome. So I'll be streaming tomorrow and Friday at 8:30 p.m. Pacific time. If I'm lucky, I might have the baby down before that, so it'll be nice and quiet. Who knows? We try to get her down early, but sometimes that doesn't always work because I get home late some evenings and she just needs her mommy before she goes to bed. I get it. really good at getting loop knots in my work. I don't know how I do it. I'm sure there's a science behind it. It probably has to do with the way my floss gets pulled through the fabric. But most of the time I can work them out. Sometimes I can't. And so I, you don't want a knot in your work. So you, I go and I either cut it or I work it out. Alright, so looks like I've got some of that established. I'm going to work a little more down this side before I switch colors and maybe get to a color that actually will show up. Because stitching ivory, ikru on ivory is about, is like stitching white on white. And it will look good once it is done. But before I move on, Keish, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come see mommy. This is Keish. If she will come up here. Come here, Keish. Come on. This is Keish. There she is. She's my greyhound. He's a puppers. She's like, what are you doing, mom? So... She is a retired Greyhound. She is awesome. And she is playing, sitting on my mute, my volume control. Let me turn that down. There we go. So that's the puppers. She's a good girl. And she's like, Mom, I'm so confused. What are you doing? You're a good dog, Quiche. All right, Quiche, I will let you down. There you go. There you go. Good girl, Quiche. Good girl. 
So if that's Keish, she's my puppers. She's a greyhound, so she's a fast doggo and a really good doggo. And she's like, I'm really confused. I'm stuck here and I really like out. But the baby is now at the stage where she wants the dog. And because she wants the dog... And because she wants the dog, it's harder for her. Yeah. That's better. Sorry. My headset got knocked by the dog, so things are a little off. If I, if I, you can't hear me or I'm too loud, please, please say something. Okay. Just seeing where I'm going. But yeah, she's a good doggo. We adopted her about um, this time last year. So she's been with us a year. I highly recommend Greyhounds as pets. They are amazing dogs, if that's the kind of uh, temperament you want. They're, some of them will play ball and whatnot. Ours does not like to play ball. She must rather sit on the couch, sleep all day. She's our 45 mile an hour couch potato, and she does that very well. So now that I've confused my poor dog, the baby is tr my, my husband has set up a barricade so the baby can't get to where I am because I'm kind of half in the kitchen. So that's better that she's not over here and the baby is trying to get through the barricade. Well, luckily she hasn't figured out how to climb yet, so we're, we're set there. I realize eventually that will change and someday she will climb and it will be Oh my gosh, when did you learn how to do that? How you doing? Hi, baby girl. up real quick there well we are getting into spring we had a nice day here it's like the perfect beach day unfortunately I did not get to go to the beach not that I'm one to go to the beach I've lived near the beach my entire life and I can't imagine not living near a beach but I also am okay not going to the beach Kind of that weird Southern California mentality. Jump from 10 Celsius to 25 Celsius. Oh wow, that's a that seems like a big jump. I don't know Celsius very well. I kind of remember some of it from my chemistry classes in high school, but that was a long time ago. Keish, my dog got into something that she shouldn't have. Sorry about that. She found a napkin. Let's see. Uh. 
stay pattern, stay. No, I'm working on that part. Don't don't flop down. Here's a hoping that the magnetic board gets here by, on Friday, like it's supposed to, so that I can have it by Friday's stream. If not, I understand, and at least having it by next Wednesday's stream would be super helpful, especially as I get further along in this carousel horse. Hopefully it'll start to look like more than just a blob sooner rather than later. I also realize that this early start steps of any cross-stitch project, regardless of what you're working on, looks like a whole lot of nothing early on until you start to establish colors and shapes. I'm finding that I have missed stitches on some of these colors. It's okay. Like I said, the pattern is hard to read. I'm working on the stomach part of the pattern. So this gray here is the back stomach part of the horse. This is in the saddle area here. Um, center is somewhere right about here. So that's where I did a center start. I prefer a center start myself. Every, every pattern I've ever started except for one has been a center start. The one that's not is the Dogs Who Time Stitch Along, which is I'm doing with Sarah Nadia and her community, as well as anyone else who is doing it with Lakeside Needlecraft. And that one we started from measuring over from the one side and from the top and the bottom, so we had a, a starting spot. And that one's making me kind of nervous to make sure that it fits on the fabric. Luckily, I know it fits width-wise. I'm hoping that it will also fit lengthwise. Or, sorry, fits lengthwise. I need to make sure it fits width-wise. It is wider than it is tall. actually found the center mark that I had marked on this chart so I would know where to start so yeah I found the center again They do did give recommendations the size of the fabric. Um, I think I'm a, a little under the recommended size, but it will still fit. I still prefer a center start just to make sure that I got my measurements right. And same with the Lakeside Needlecraft one did as well. They did give recommended fabric size, and I'm slightly different size than what they recommended. I did do all my measurements and all my calculations, so as long as I did that correctly, which knowing me is entirely possible that I didn't, we should be good to go. It's all nerves so you find the edge, right? Yes. Yes, it is. <coughs> so one, so I'll probably be all nerves until I think, because it's it won't be until the seventh or eighth part that they'll establish the bottom edge, and I'll feel better about the whole thing. But so far, it's seeming to work all right, and I have faith that. It will all work out. I 
<laughs> you just gave the pattern to the shop you bought your fabric at for the Heaven Earth Design project, and they did the calculating. Yeah, I actually, if um, Yarn Tree have has a a site um, for cross stitch calculator, it's amazing. I just Google cross stitch calculator, and it is super easy and super simple. You Google that, and all you have to do is tells you how much fabric they recommend, how what size they recommend, and based on how big of a border you want. That's how I've determined to make sure things fit. Baby has just been put in the pack and play. She's now in baby jail and she's not happy about this whole thing. But if she would stop, she wants to get into everything. She's climbing, she's crawling, she's... It's amazing, but at the same time, we cannot have her everywhere. As our house is kind of baby-proofed. It's not completely baby-proofed. We're working on that as we realize that she can reach more and more things. Just you wait, Hikari. Your little one will be in the same boat soon enough. <laughs> Oh, I understand cleaning and having too much stuff. We have that problem. We have too much stuff because we have too many hobbies. And because we have too many hobbies, we have too much stuff. So even though I probably could stitch some more in this color, I'm actually going to move on to another color because I'm getting a little tired of this color. And I'm sure some of you are getting tired of not being able to see this color. Of course, I've managed to get myself a knot again. Luckily, it was the right. He's already making crawling motions while he's lying us. Tell me, that's excellent. That's great. That's what my little one did for a while. She got so frustrated that she couldn't crawl. And then she finally did, and it was like, yay, you're crawling. All right, so... I think we're going to move back into the stomach and less than, all right, 414, go through my box and see if I can find 414. Four fifteen, four thirteen. 13, 3, 18, ah, 4, 14, excellent, sorry, Let's work on a color that's a little, maybe not exciting, but at least able to be seen on the fabric. And after my break, I will go and get my needle minder because I'm realizing that that's the one thing I forgot to do. I only have one needle minder right now. I eventually will get more. But for right now, it's just the one. So it kind of jumps to whatever project I'm currently working on. So Let's get more of this horse's stomach fleshed out. So it's less of an outline and more of a solid section.
So one thing that makes some of these patterns unique by Teresa Wensler is that she does so many blends that she gets these gorgeous gradations of color. And we'll really get to see that here in the horse's stomach. My little one is not having it right this second. So for you moms out there, I apologize if her whining is making you go, oh, she's fine. Dad's got her. She's just not, not happy right this second, but she'll survive. All right, so one and skip one. All right, I'm going to finish this row and then I'm going to take a quick break. I need to get up and walk around and stretch before I can continue. So, also going to check on the little one, make sure she's doing okay. I, I f I'm sure she is, but maybe a little, a little bit of, of attention from mom might help a little bit. And I might find a paper clip or something to keep my pattern from blowing over. Stay pattern. Stay. I also need to get my needle minder because I would really like to have that right now. It's currently on my goose project. There we go. Let me just see where I need to come back up. And then I'll be taking a quick break. All right. Awesome. All right. I am going to take a quick break. I will be right back.
All right, I'm back. Found my needle minder. Well, I didn't find it. I knew exactly where it was. I got my needle minder, so now I have a place to put my needle again. Yay! Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Gotta get up and walk around. Can't stay in one position for too, too long. Especially since this isn't my usual cross-stitching position. I usually sit kind of curled up on the couch with it on my lap. But this is actually fun, too. So, got good arm support. And I may have to figure out a solution for my pattern sooner rather than later. Because it keeps getting blowing itself over. Yes. Moving around is healthy. Get up and walk around. Don't be sed sedentary for too long. This is your health tip for the week. Brought to you by Kaya. Now, I did move around all day today, so I got a lot of moving around. Felt good to be outside working. I'm gonna be looking as, uh, as Zeke continues to watching Gundam Seed Destiny. <laughs> yeah, hey, <laughs> okay, go ahead and lurk away, I understand. Especially when you've got a little. Sometimes you, you cannot actively participate in chat, and that's okay, I don't mind. It's great that you guys are here with me, just hanging out. I, I do appreciate y'all spending your evening with me. It is not too bad. No complaints on my end. Now we'll go for uh, about another hour, uh, maybe a little less than an hour. Got to give my poor husband a break with the baby. He's been with her all day, and then I come home and get to entertain the baby for a little bit, and then I'm jumping into stream, so. He's awesome, and he's amazing, and I know he's not really watching or listening right now, but I think he's pretty awesome. Let's see, I'm thinking... Yeah, I can do that. So I started a new stupid game on my mobile phone. The new Harry Potter game is out, at least in the United States. I don't know if it's anywhere else. And it's stupid addicting, like in every other stupid mobile game. So that'll be taking my time again. So if anyone's playing, I, I do. It's kind of fun. It's it's simple point and click type type thing on the mobile phone. And you get to choose what house you belong in. So. I didn't have to take a silly quiz and hope that it would put me in the right place. But I got to pick where I belong. Which is always nice. Because it is super important what Hogwarts house you belong to. And for those of you wondering, I do identify with Ravenclaw. So, I'm a Ravenclaw. Yay! 
I love my Hufflepuff friends. They're great at finding things. I also have a really close friend who's a Slytherin. And I married a Gryffindor, so... And he only knows that because I made him take the quiz. He didn't really care, but I was curious. Let's see... Alright. So you can kind of see, starting to fill in that stomach just a little bit, looking like less like an outline and more like a, a solid blob. See, am I going there next? Yes, yes I am. Right. Another two stitches. I've managed to get myself another knot. Yeah, I worked it out. Hoping not to get too many knots. I really want this to look nice. I this is one that I would like to frame. I it's on my list of things skills I would like to learn is how to do matting and framing of my own stuff. Someday. That way I can save money on custom framing because that is not cheap. I think this one would be a nice one that will be framed. Or some other ones that I'm working on might be better as a wall scroll or a pillow. This one I think would be really nice framed. I just I imagine having all four of them framed together on a wall. Someday. That's gonna be a lot of stitching and take a lot of time. my way around see how much of the stomach I can get done maybe I'd like to, I'd like to get into one more color on the stomach see what it does kind of and then maybe start to see the gradation that's gonna be going on here it's gonna I think it's gonna look really pretty And if I get, I don't know if I will, but if I get the cross stitching done 
on my on the goose this week. I might be able to show it off on stream to see how things are going, you know, show that one off if it's complete in terms of the cross stitching. I don't expect to get the back stitching done. But Kujo, who is my husband and I are planning on going down to San Diego area this weekend um, for another a medieval tournament. The one that's actually in my hometown. So that's an hour drive south. That means that's an hour of me getting to stitch in the car. So yay, stitching in the car. And since it's down where my parents are, maybe we'll see them for dinner, depending on what my mom's up to. She gets really busy with doing costuming and whatnot with youth theater and uh, high school theater and even community theater that she's not always free on weekends for dinner. I'll have to give her a call, send her a text, see what she's up to. If not, I'm sure my dad would love to see us. But we will have Kishi Dog with us because we take Kish everywhere that she can go. And of course the baby will be with us because of course we take the baby everywhere. Can't just leave the baby at home. So I did make a working copy of this pattern. I may highlight it to help keep track of where I am. I usually don't do that, but because of the nature of this pattern and the fact that I'm doing it slightly distracted on stream, I definitely don't want to miss stitches. And if I, I know I've already missed a couple of the three quarter stitches because they're harder to read on the chart. That way, if I have indeed missed them, I'll be able to pick them up again pretty quickly. If I do any work on this off stream early on, it will be to pick up some of those missed stitches so that I'm not constantly switching colors. But that way I can stay on top of it. Two more. Excellent. All right. And if I've counted correctly, this should match up on the other side. Hey, look, it does. Yay. I like when I get things counted correctly. It saves for trouble later on the road. There's nothing like thinking that you've miscounted or you actually are thinking you haven't miscounted and you actually have and then you're frogging a lot of stitches. In a pattern like this, I probably, if I made a major mistake with the missed stitch, I probably would do a lot of frogging to, to make up for it. The pattern's got a lot of detail and a lot of three-quarter stitches and a lot of little things that it would be, as annoying as it would be, it would be worth frogging those stitches to make things match up the way they're supposed to. And from the non-cross-stitch types, I don't know if there's any in here, frogging is when you're going to rip out stitches you've already done, or so you rip it. 
and sometimes it sounds like a frog being the sound of a frog when you pull that floss back through the fabric. If any of you watching are not cross-stitchers and you have any questions about any terminology I use or anyone else in chat uses, feel free to ask. I've actually learned a few new terms myself recently, like frogging. I had never heard that until within until a few months ago. I just, just referred to it as taking out stitches. And it looks like we're playing a little bit of floss chicken. I was probably will have to cut more. I'm not going to be able to finish beyond this row, which is kind of a bummer because I don't like to carry over a bunch of stitches if I don't have to. Help keep that back somewhat neat and organized, especially on a project like this, which ha will have a lot of jumping, have some confetti, have a lot of different colors. And by working on keeping my back a little bit tidy, it'll make it easier to stitch. But Kaya's first rule of cross-stitching is to have fun. Kaya's second rule of cross-stitching, if the back look, if the front looks, not the back, if the front looks like how you want it to look, uh, then you did it right. Unless you're going to having a comp, entering your piece in a competition, the back of your cross-stitch really doesn't matter as long as the front looks the way you want it to. For me, it's kind of an OC, a little bit of an OCD thing, helps with keeping me focused by working on keeping my back nice and neat. I realize that's not for everyone and that's okay. So don't ever be ashamed of the back of your cross stitch. Be proud in your work and have fun doing what you're doing. At least for me, cross stitch is all about the journey to finish the project. The finished result is always fun, but the heart of doing the project is the process. So if you're not having fun with the process, maybe you shouldn't work on that pattern. That being said, that is the story behind one of my works in progress. When I picked it up, originally I thought it was going to be fun, I liked the colors, I liked the pattern. Now, three years later, almost pushing into four years, this I have an ocelot that is currently unfinished because I can't focus on it for very long. So I pick on it, pick at it for a little bit each month, hopefully get a little more done, but it doesn't always work out that way. All right, so I'll get a little more floss of this gray color, this 414. And I am working with two, two strands of floss. Generally I do. I have not really worked with one strand of floss other than for back stitching. I like the coverage of two strands. I've not worked small enough where working one strand is sufficient. I've even done some coverage with three strands depending what the pattern calls for. Some more of this gray and keep going. All right. Where was I?
He's finishing up this bottom part, and then I'll do this part, and then I will probably switch colors again. Let's so see how far we can get to getting the stomach part filled tonight. It's kind of my goal, fill in the stitches in the stomach part. That way we have a shape more than just a few different sections. Then we can work more into the saddle and the blanket on the back of the horse, get some more color in here. Because right now, I'm finding it kind of boring color-wise. I'm usually attracted to cross-stitch patterns that either have pictures I like, such as dragons, ducks, cute things like the jungle sal I'm working on. But sometimes a color palette will get me interested in a, in a cross-stitch as well. And this one has a pretty simple color palette. It's mostly grays, blues, some greens, and some pinks. Not any yellow or any colors like that. So that should be fun. One thing you may notice as you if you find a a designer you like that cr does cross stitch, sometimes they pick f um, very similar palettes from uh, project to project. I notice that a lot with Teresa Wetzler's. I notice a lot of the same colors in a lot of her different patterns. Whereas Joan Elliott, another artist I like, she uses a completely different palette, but I find it carried over from project to project. Which is helpful, is if you're doing something, a lot of different things with the same cross-stitch designer, you have a lot of the colors already, and you're not having to go pick up a bunch of colors for each project. On the other hand, it doesn't give you an excuse to make your DMC collection larger, so there is that. So far, I haven't had to dig into the blending filament yet, which will be interesting when we get there. For those of you who've never used blending filament, I, it's kind of a pain. It's this plasticky fiber that adds some great shimmer and sparkle to your project. So if you love shimmer and sparkle on a project, it makes it really look cool. However, the process to make it work is not always so fun. I know there was an article somewhere about a trick to using it. I'll have to Google it before I get into that so that I maybe won't get so frustrated with blending filament. Alright. Let's do a little more in this color. And then we will move on. Yes, I put my needle in my mouth. I'm sorry. I know I took all that time to go find my my needle miner and I'm not even using it now. Bad Kaya, no cookies. Just working on that. As long as my little baby girl doesn't have a complete meltdown, I'd like to go for another 30 minutes. Can't have the baby having a meltdown. Cause she doesn't quite understand yet.
<laughs> Naka, Naka says she heard an excuse about needing something about needing an excuse to grow your DMC collection and was confused. No excuses needed. Well, I can't justify spending the money on all close to 500 colors of DMC unless I have a reason to use them. So, until I have a re- you know, it's not like I'm like, oh, I'm only missing five colors, I should go pick up the five colors I'm missing. I'm missing quite a few colors in the DMC line, and only pick up what I need as I need to start projects. So, so starting a new project means I have to see how much DMC I have, and I do have multiples of different colors because I did take the time, and each project I have has its own little project bag slash box so even if I do have multiple colors each pro that way I have to worry about for projects you could get them all on a giant sale and end up saving a lot of money it's economical really yeah but then I have to figure out a place to put all of the the, the skeins and I don't quite have that storage Believe me, someday I would love to own the full DMC collection. If anyone of you guys are on Instagram, this morning DMC posted a tour of how they make their floss in their Instagram story. So I recommend you check that out. It was kind of cool seeing how they do it. And since it's in their Instagram story, it probably only stick around for 24 hours. So check that out before it disappears. Dear for Jeff, hope she spends all her money on floss for literally being buried in the stuff. Aw, oh, poor Derpy Dev. I could take some of it off your hands. <laughs> Joe, it's fine. It all fits in a box. Naka, would your box happen to be quite a lot of square footage? Fitting in, you know, fits on a half acre? <laughs> Stop calling the house a box. Don't worry, Naka, I would never take your floss. <laughs> Box pretty sizable, three billions, nice. Broke the register at Joanne's, nice. I come into Joanne's and buy like all the floss, and they kind of look at me. You can tell they don't want to scan each color individually, even though they have to scan each color individually, so it helps with their their tracking and their inventory. only happened a few times. I learned to break up my purchases. Yeah. I walk into Joann's and they always say, did you find everything you needed? I go, you're missing five colors of DMC I need. I'm going to Michael's now. Or vice versa. I find that when I'm starting a new cross-stitch project, I cannot go and get all the colors I need in one trip. I end up having to visit both both Joanne's, at least one Michael's, if not both Michael's in my area. That is one advantage to living in a suburban area and near civilization is I have access. I do also have a um, an LNS, but it seems to be currently in between places, a uh, local needle, needle workshop. And that's nice because then you can get a lot of the specialty stuffs. A lot of the special um, floss or sometimes fabric. But they tend, every time I've gone in, they never have all the Krennic I need. Uh, Krennic does the metallic braids and blending filament, so then I have to go buy, order it online. I actually do order most of my Krennic from a local needle workshop on the East Coast. Their prices are comparable to what I can get on 123 Stitch or everything cross stitch, and that way I'm actually supporting a local needle workshop. So that's, yay for that. <laughs> you cry, leaving all, after cleaning out the cobwebs in your wallet. <laughs> oh, Naka, derpy dev. No fighting in my chat. You gotta enable the project. You can learn to cross stitch too. I offered to teach Cujo, but 
poor Cujo um, is red green colorblind so him learning to cross stitch would not work as well on some of these patterns because he might not be able to tell exactly what color goes where. He also refuses to fetch me floss because he does, even though it's numbered, he can't always tell what, you know, like, oh, it's it's a red one, it's this number, and he looks at me like I'm speaking a foreign language, but that's okay. I will find my own floss. Let's see, we finished that section. So yay, it still looks like a shape, but we're filling it in. We're gonna move on to the next color in this area. And that is 318. So far, I haven't had to do any blends in the horse, which is surprising. I would have expected a blended color by now. 318, 317. I said 318, right? Yes. Ten four thirteen. I know I have all these three eighteen. Oh, three eighteen is the one I have very little on this left. That's okay. I have a whole nother skein of three eighteen. So before I started this one, I went through all my floss to figure out what colors I needed and which ones I had. Anything I was low on, I bought a second skein of. Anything I had, I didn't buy a second skein of, of course. Baby girl run out of snacks, Cujo. As Cujo comes to get more snacks for the baby, the dog looks on hungrily like maybe she'll get a snack too. The pupper does not need snacks. As much as she thinks she needs snacks, she does not need snacks. I might have cut this one a little long. I tend to cut my floss a little long out, just, and then I get knots, and then I say, I'm never gonna cut it that long again, and then I cut it that long again. So far, so good. Let's see how close to the stomach I can get finished before I get to the end of my stream. If not, we'll have a thing to start on tomorrow, because I will be back tomorrow. I'll be back a little later, actually starting later after the time I finish today. That's what happens when you work to the time that you intend to start streaming. You have an in-progress stitch that you haven't touched in months. I know that feeling. I'd go in waves where I'd stitch like crazy and then I would put something away and not work on stuff for a while. I've actually been in an upswing for cross-stitching lately. I haven't, since Christmas two years ago, I haven't really put stop stitching. I've been continually working on projects. It's been kind of nice. I am glad that I, I found the 
the stitching bug, so to say. Because I, I look at my cross-stitch box, and I actually do have a box that most of my cross-stitch fits in. And I go, oh, I want to work on that project. I want to start this project. And now that I have been focusing more on my stitching, I've been able to work a lot, a lot more. Like I have so, I feel like I have so many in progress right now. I haven't had this many in progress since I got a hair up my butt and finished a bunch of them. That's actually on my back burner. I intend to get at least download pictures of some of my past projects so I can get a slideshow going so people can see some of my past cross-stitch projects and some of the other things I do such as silk banner painting and some of my uh, illuminated manuscript style painting so that when I jump into that craft which I intend to do on stream there'll be a little bit of that as well in case anyone was wondering my opening my be right back and my ending slash offline screen are actually paintings that I have done uh, the carousel horse one, which is my Be Right Back screen, is one that I have in progress. I would love to finish it someday. My dad likes to say, no, don't finish it, I like the way it looks. But someday, when I can paint an oil painting again, I will finish the, broad, the painting. But for now, I think it makes a great starting soon kind of Be Right Back screen. And my little green guy sitting right on top of my chat here. Um, he is a Cali Greyhound, which is a medieval um, heraldic beast. He does need a name, so if anyone thinks of a cute name for my little my little guy, let me know. I would gladly give him a name. He's a sleeping Cali Greyhound, and he is green. So. And a friend of mine. She did, I did the drawing of him, but a friend of mine cleaned it up in Photoshop and got him colored for me, since that is something outside my skill set. I never did learn Photoshop or any of that in college. I did the more fine arts, the more um, physical side of fine arts. I did drawing and painting. I actually am classically trained in that sense. So I do look forward to being able to get some of that on stream someday. Uh, there we go, let's see. Welcome back, Akari, and yay for feeding the baby. It's probably getting close to his bedtime, isn't it? Since I know you're in the same time zone as I am. So what's the next row? I heard a fussing baby in the grab family. Yeah, my little one's kind of being fussy. She's, I, she's at the point where I'm pretty sure she doesn't know what she wants. She probably is ready for bed. She wants snacks. She wants attention. She wants to play. She doesn't want to be exactly where she is right this second. <laughs> with with the baby what's bed for time it does get easier at least it was hard for us to get a schedule kind of going with the baby because of my work schedule and then her needing to eat and right now we we've got her so she's got a late morning nap she's got a late afternoon nap and then can usually get her to, to bed no later than 8 30 it really depends on what i'm working too 
So if I'm working on the later side, sometimes she doesn't get as, to bed as early as we'd like. And if, if Zeke's like mine, you're up every couple hours in the middle of the night. Though she's getting better about that. kind of where I'm at now. I would love to know what inter uninterrupted sleep is. I don't know what that is anymore. When I was pregnant, I wanted just to have quality sleep because I was up constantly between trying to roll over plus my bladder being very tiny, it seemed like. Now that the baby is here, I just want sleep that's uninterrupted. Which I hear comes later. So, yay, here's for hoping. So we're getting there. It's starting to look more like a shape. From, from, so I have no need to be fed in your eyes very rough the first few nights that plenty of people will choose just to keep waking up and said, yeah. We have done a little bit of the sleep training, like we can get to the point now where we can... Oh, dropped the low camera, sorry about that. Yeah, we're trying, you know. It's hard letting her fuss. But she's doing better. She slept pretty good last night and the night before, so it's just a matter of time. Let's see. All right, so. Yeah, that's the thing is I don't know if I could let her cry it out like that. I we've kind of I've done a couple nights where she's fallen asleep in my arms and I've moved her to the crib. I've got a co-sleeper crib that we dropped down to the lowest level because she can stand up in the crib now because she's clever like that. And it's like one day she was standing up. We're like, and eh, now we're not gonna do that anymore. The last thing I needed her is figuring out how to climb out and then just falling because yeah. Mom is not up for a trip to the emergency room. I managed to make myself a pretty nice knot on the back, so let's fix this. Sorry for it being out of frame. But I don't want to show off my knot. This is why you should never have really long floss, because then you get into this problem where you start to create knots, and that's bad. So this one I'm not going to be able to work out, so I am going to have to cut some of this floss. This is a do as I say, not as I do moment, where you don't want to have too long, too, too much floss cut. So I'm going to finish a couple more rows. I can tell by the frustrated noises coming from my little one that it's almost time for the stream to end.
<laughs> Kaya hit with the bad example. Yep, I'm gonna put my needle in my mouth. Uh, I'm going to make cut my floss too long so it creates knots. Things that you should not do. And now I can't thread my needle, so it's all good. And there, threaded my needle, yay! Okay, now that we're back. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm good at being the example of what not to do sometimes with stitching. Knots are no fun. It's never fun to get them. It's not fun to work them out. Sometimes you do just have to give up and cut your floss. So I'm going to finish this row and then do two stitches on the next row. And that's probably where I'm going to call it for the night. I do want to thank everybody for who stopped in and stopped by for coming on over. I'm glad to have you here with me tonight. And I do appreciate everyone coming in. If you are, if you can follow me on Instagram, I am at Kyariana on Instagram. You can see in progress photos. That's where things are going to go first for now. Anything that I do on stream will then show up there shortly thereafter once I get a chance to photograph it. It's also where you can see some of my other works in progress with the cross stitching. And sometimes I post pictures of my Greyhound and other times I do post about my tea obsession. So my Instagram is, is mostly my cross stitch and other art projects, but sometimes it does have my dog because who doesn't love puffers? And you can follow me on both Facebook and Twitter at Kyariana Streams. That's my handle on both Facebook and Twitter. You can like my page. You can follow me on Twitter for up-to-date stream announcements if you don't have that feature turned on on Twitch. All right. So that's what we're stopping for today. Got a little bit of progress done. You can see we worked in, filled in some of that gray. Got a little bit done in here, which is hard to see on camera, but I'll, you should be able to pick that up in a picture. So I do want to thank everyone for joining me here this evening. It's been a lot of fun. And I will be back tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Pacific time. And thanks for streaming with me, hanging out with me as I stream. And I hope to see you guys next time. Have a good night. Don't stay up too late, as I tell my husband. And I'll see you, hopefully see you guys tomorrow.